2024 brings a lot of new tax changes that will improve your financial situation significantly. Or not, depending on the exact tax change. But do not fear, we're breaking down the 7 biggest tax changes of 2024 in a way that is easy to understand and actionable with specific to-dos. In this Perfinex tax video. There are lots of positive changes, but there's also some negative changes. Let's start on a positive note. Every single one of you guys watching will get to keep more of your gross salary and pay less in taxes. Completely automatic without having to do anything. Sounds like magic? Kind of. This chart determines how much taxes each and every one of us pays in taxes. The blue line is the maximum income tax rate that determines how much every single euro is taxed in and of itself. So income below 10,000 euro is tax free, everything above 63,000 euro is taxed at 42% and everything else in between. So a person making 63k or more in taxable income does pay the maximum income tax rate of 42% but only on a tiny little bit of income. The average tax rate, given in the purple line, is 26% only. Don't think you have to pay 42% on your entire income if you make more than 63k. So that's why this person would pay a total of 16.5k in taxes with a taxable income of 63k. And this year you cannot just make 10,908 euro without paying a single cent in taxes, you can make at least 11,604 euro, maybe even 11,784 euro. Anyway, the entire blue line is going to shift to the right, which means we all pay less taxes. The total tax cut is estimated to be around 15 billion euros. We get to keep more of our hard earned money for ourselves. Oh man, I wish I could start every video with a 15 billion euro tax cut. The lower your taxable income, the less you will pay in taxes. So far, so obvious. How to actually decrease your taxable income is often not so obvious. You get your gross salary, which you can lower with tax deductible expenses in order to have the lowest taxable income possible. Remember, if your taxable income is around 11, 12,000 euro, you won't pay a single cent in taxes. So we just need a lot of tax deductible costs. The next points on the list. A lot of you guys will buy geringwertige Wirtschaftsgüter. What is that? Anything that you use for your job or studies. That is movable and wearable, so it depreciates. Typical examples are all kinds of office furniture for your home office. A new computer, some kind of software or hardware. The camera we're shooting this video with, for example. All kinds of stuff that you use for your job or studies. Not privately. This year you can deduct these usable items immediately from your taxes if you bought them for less than 1000 euros each. And that doesn't include value added tax. So actually the purchasing price is 1190 euros in the stores. If the item is worth less than 1000 euros without VAT, you can deduct it from your taxes in the purchasing year, giving you up to 420 euro tax benefit with a 42% tax rate. If it's more than 1000 euro, you have to depreciate the item over its lifetime. For an office desk, that is 13 years, for example. So you better buy a desk for 999 euro and get tax benefits immediately than a desk for 1001 euro, where you have to stretch out the tax benefits over 13 years. An even bigger opportunity to decrease your taxable income, the biggest in fact, aside from investing in real estate, are retirement savings. Many of you guys like to invest in ETFs, but that doesn't give you any tax benefits here in Germany. In fact, you have to pay taxes without even making a profit because the preliminary investment tax is back this year. But when you invest in ETFs, insider base pension level 1, whatever you invest becomes tax deductible, therefore decreasing your taxable income and your personal tax rate awesome to make the government pay 42% of your retirement savings, isn't it? Singles can invest up to 27.5k this year and marries couple twice as much, more than 55,000 euros. Everything above that is not tax deductible anymore. But that maximum is probably not an issue for 99% of you guys watching. Having a lot of tax deductible expenses 
is good because it decreases your personal tax rate. But they have to be meaningful expenses because you get only 42% of the expenses back. Keep that in mind. If you have no tax deductible or very little expenses, filing your taxes is still a good idea. This year, more than ever, because of the so-called Pauschbetrag, the amount of tax deductible expenses you can claim without any proof, increased to 1,230 euro this year. So please, if you're the laziest person in the world and don't want to do anything with taxes, get one of these do-it-yourself tax filing apps for 30 euros and claim at least the 1,230 euro Pauschbetrag. If you just do this, you will finish your tax declaration easily in under one hour and the 1,230 euro Pauschbetrag will give you more than 500 euro with a 42% personal tax rate. Pretty good hourly wage, if you ask me. Every seventh company car is electric, and there's a good reason why. Company cars are usually taxed with a 1% rule here in Germany. So if your company car costs 50k when it's new, 1% of that is added to your gross salary every month. You are taxed on that 500 euro fictional benefit, and then it's deducted again before you get your net salary transferred to your bank account. That's for regular cars. Hybrid cars are taxed at half a percent instead of one percent, giving you a 50% bonus. And fully electric cars are taxed at a quarter of a percent only. That's a massive benefit for everyone with an electric company car worth 70,000 or less. If your electric company car is more expensive than 70k, you're taxed at half a percent again. So far for the positive tax changes. But there's one small thing that I forgot to mention. Our government is a little strapped for cash after the court ruled at the end of last year that they used some money illegally. A casual 60 billion euros, yes, that's billion with a B, they need to find again. And that's why they're not just positive changes, but also they need to fill the 60 billion somehow. Well, you add a tax, increase for everyone who wants to go out and eat at a restaurant. In order to support restaurants during the pandemic, the government decreased VAT for restaurants to 7%. Now the pandemic is apparently over, so they increased the VAT back to the standard 19% rate. Some restaurants might happily take that chance and increase their prices overall. But if they didn't, visiting the restaurant should be 12% more expensive this year than last year. Using electricity, fueling your car or heating your home will also get more expensive. Why? Because all these activities emit CO2 and there's a CO2 tax on it. We have about 40 different taxes here in Germany and one of them is the CO2 tax. So yes, you heard me right. This tax increased from 30 euro per ton last year to 45 euro per ton this year and probably to 55 euro per ton next year. What does that mean for you personally? It sounds a little more dramatic than it probably turns out to be in reality. The average driver will pay 100 euro more this year to fuel their car. The average electricity bill will go up by about 120 euro or 10 euro per month. Only oil or gas heating systems hurt a little because they should be about 370 euro more expensive than last year. And keep in mind that these figures do not take oil or gas prices into account, only the change from the rising CO2 tax. These are some of the biggest tax changes coming into the new year. Overall positive if you ask me. But what do you think about these changes? Let us know in the comments.